Yo, what is up, YouTube? James back here, and welcome back to another episode of V2C 2020 Back to the Battles. Today, we are going to be continuing using the Draco Soul team that get top four in the Players' Cup in the European bracket with Coronite, Draco Zolt, Grim Snarl, Gastrodon, Arcanine, Real Boom, a team created by Roxon. If you want to go check him out, I'll link his Twitter down below in the description. But yeah, it's a very fun team. If you haven't checked out the previous episodes, highly recommend go checking it out. And a few things, of course. If you do enjoy these videos, be sure to leave a like down below and leave a comment down below. It really does help me out. You can check out my Twitch channel where I do live stream on Twitch, variety games, and more VGC content. So if you're interested in that, link in the description down below. And third, if you want to go check out my second YouTube channel, make sure you go check it out because I do have some VGC content there from my streams as well as some non-VGC content I'll be playing in the future. Otherwise, let's get started with today's video. So today's common question of the day is going to be about the game called Fall Guys. I think that's what it's called, right? Yes, so let me know if you have heard about the game or if you have seen the game or if you even played it because it did release and it's taken the world by storm really or at least the gaming world by storm. A lot of views on Twitch, if you don't know, the largest streaming platform probably out there besides YouTube gaming. And yeah, it's actually quite insane like how many views it gets. And yeah, I've never actually played it yet. I've only seen it be played quite a bit and it looks really fun. So let me know your opinions about it down below in the comments. Have you played it? Have you tried it? Have you watched someone play it? Let me know your opinions down below. And it is Fall Guys. I'm pretty sure. I hope it's Fall Guys. I don't remember it's Fallout. But I'm pretty sure it's Fall Guys. You know, it's kind of bothering me actually. Maybe I'll just look it up. I'll look it up while we're waiting for a battle because it is taking a little bit to find the game. So you know what? We will look it up. So it is called Fall. Yeah, it is Fall Guys. Okay. There we go. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you think of the game. We have our first opponent, Stu interesting team we got cinderace talonflame urshifu meow stick the toxicity as well as the crocodile so quite a few things here a very hyper offensive team like really hyper offensive meow stick could be in prison tricking potentially on this team because of the fact that this team is really weak to trick him it looks like um screens do look really good against him and i really like my draco Zolt because like draco Zolt just powers through this team immensely uh, the only Pokemon that's annoying is the Crocodile, which Max Dragon can kind of cover for. So, yeah. I do like Draco Zolt, I think Grimmsnarl as well. I could also lead Arcanine because I could go for Willis. And that'd be really good against the team, too. So, I'm trying to figure out about what I want to lead here. Hmm. Kind of like the Grimmsnarl. And I think the Arcanine is just very solid here as a lead. Yeah, I kind of like that as an option. And then I'm thinking Gastrodon in the back because my opponent doesn't have the best Gastrodon answers with the Draco Zolt. I could bring Rillaboom because Rillaboom is not bad against the team overall because it can hit the Crocodile, which is the only Pokemon stopping Draco Zolt. But I think Gastrodon can wall the end game quite efficiently too. So <laughs> there's a lot of good picks that I could bring here. But you know what? I'm going to play a bit passive because I think this team, again, is trying to set up for the win con when you can outpower your opponent with the Draco Zolt in the end game. Maybe you can lead it and just do a bunch of damage right away and then bulk out the rest of the win. But let's see uh, what we can do here. So it is going to be the Crocodile Cinderace lead. Okay. Um, Interesting. Let's find out if it's Intimidate, Crocodile, or potentially Anger Point, or Moxie. We do get an Intimidate off to kick things off. Okay. I can Thunder Wave the uh, Cinderace, which would be nice. We do see the Intimidate. Okay. So that's fine. Um, I think I just want to Thunder Wave the Cinderace and I could go for a Wisp in the Crocodile. That'd be very solid here. Then I could reflect up and then bring in the Draco Zolt. I kind of like that option because like once Crocodile basically is neutered, again, Draco Zolt's going to come in big. I'm going to Thunder Wave the the Cinderace and I think I'm going to go for the Willis. I am going for some inaccurate moves, however. So, of course, if we do miss, could be a bit of a pain. But we are going to see the actually switch out here into Toxtricity. So, want to cover for the Thunder Wave, which makes sense here. So, that's completely fine. Thunder Wave does go out into that slot as we do get the Willis off. And it does land on the Crocodile, which is awesome. So, we are going to be able to burn that Crocodile. High horsepower probably coming out here. Stone Edge, actually. Okay. Into the Arcanine does absolutely nothing. Okay, perfect. 
so I don't know if you're gonna Dynamax Toxtricity. I think the safest place is actually just to go Gastrodon here and click Snarl. I could also light screen up and go out into Gastrodon for the Arcanine side, but I'm a little bit worried about potentially a Sludge Bomb or Max Poison. So I'd rather just go Gastrodon, I think, here. Because I think keeping Grimstar for the Thunderwave pressure is nice later. No Dynamax coming out. Okay, as I do get a Snarl off. And that will be able to lower the Toxicity special attack. Crocodile gets crit. Thankfully, it's not Anger Point. If it was Anger Point, I'd be mad here. <laughs> as we are able to get a Snarl off. We are going to see the Darkest Lariat come out. Okay. Not going to do any damage. Actually, that did a lot more than I thought. Overdrive. Okay, so no Poison move. As it is going to target down my Arcanine as well as the Gastrodon. Doesn't really do that much, but it is a Throat Spray variant. Okay. So, I'm kind of content with where I am right now. Because I feel like it's a very safe Earth Power play into the Toxtricity. And the question is, what do I want to do with Arcanine? I think I want to switch because it's safe. I could go Grimstall and start setting up my screens for the uh, later game. I get to keep the Intimidate around with the Arcanine later, especially for like Talonflame, for instance. Yeah, I like that option. Not really that worried about if I take a Sludge Bomb, because then I think I can get Draco's Old in and start doing damage. They don't really have an Earth Power switching for Toxtricity anyway, besides the potential Talonflame, but then I could Scald it the following turn. I see the Darkest Lariat come out into the Gastrod Onslaught, do absolutely nothing, as we do see a Sludge Wave actually, so okay. It's going to be a neutral, so it's not going to KO Grimmsnarl. This Grimmsnarl does survive. No poisons at all, actually. So I am able to get an Earth Power, and this is able to knock out Toxtricity. Toxtricity is eliminated from the field, which is nice. So goodbye, Toxtricity. And the Crooked Isle is still minus one in burn. So really just not doing too much. So let's see what my opponent's going to bring out next. Could be the Talonflame. Or the Cinderace coming back. It's actually going to be the Urshifu. Okay as it's the water variant oh that's really good for us okay so perfect so i could go for the earth power actually into the urshifu and i can start setting up a reflect because this is perfect because the only move they can go for a crit is with the uh water move and thankfully since we have storm drain it can't touch either of us so we're guaranteed to reflect off and we can start bulking up here so this is really nice as we see earthquake coming out okay not really going to do too much Okay, I'm feeling very good about our spot. As you can see, it does no damage, basically. Earth power into the Urshifu slot, because again, I'm not that worried about Crocodile. Cinderace could have swapped in there, but then again, they have to rely about Thunder Wave. I guess they could have doubled back into Crocodile. I think I would be fine with that, though. Because I'm just going to Earth Power and Spirit Break the Urshifu. Actually, I could Thunder Wave it. Because it's not a Dark type. Actually, yeah, why not Thunder Wave it? Makes more sense, I think, because if they are able to knock out Grimmsnarl, I think it's just better to get a Thunder Wave off. So my Draco's Ult can outspeed it. So we do get the Thunder Wave off. We do land, which is awesome. So let's see. Darkest Lair going to come out into the Gastrodon once again. Which we're able to take very comfortably. Rockside going to come out. So I guess they're trying to flinch. Grimmsnarl took a decent chunk from that, as I am going to be able to heal with my Citrus Berry. So yeah, this is proving to be really effective as we do see an Earth Power does go off into the Urshifu. And that is not a 2 at knockout, but that's okay here. I think I get to go for a... I think I just go for the Urshifu again. Because again, if they... Like, I'm just waiting for that free opportunity to bring in Draco's Soul and just do damage. So... Where's the Urshifu you protect? That's fine. If they Earthquake, that's not bad for me at all. I do not mind this position. They're going to go for Earthquake once again. Because again, I think I could just go Draco's Hold in the end and then Airstream. And then be completely fine. So that's why I'm not aiming for the Crocodile. And if they switch out Crocodile, that means I could always get like a Thunder Wave off into the Cinderace potentially. So they don't really want to go Cinderace right here. So that works for me. I'm going to be able to get a... Double up again into Urshifu, potentially pick up the knockout. So we will go for the Spear Break here, as well as the Earth Power. Again, Crocodile just not doing anything because it is minus one and burn. So our position is looking very solid here to begin things off. It's really hard for them to come back. It looks like Lariat going to come out into the Grimstone. Does that knock out? <laughs> not even close, actually. Uh, but it's actually faster. It goes for close combat, but that's going to knock out the Gastrodon. Or target into the Gastrodon. So... Yeah, um, 
that's fine because I'm able to get a spirit break off into the Urshifu, which means Urshifu does go down here. Awesome. So Urshifu is eliminated as we are able to get an Earth Power off into Crocodile, which means they'll pick up a knockout, I think, with the burn. Unless it has a berry. Yeah. So Crocodile does go down, and now it's just Cinderace versus the world. And I still have Reflect up. I can go for Intimidates. It's looking really good for us. Again, they have to probably Dynamax here. If they don't Dynamax, they're... Well, I guess if they don't Dynamax, it's fine too. But they had to dodge a Thunder Wave. I think they had to dodge a Thunder Wave. Or multiple, potentially. Let us see. We'll go for a Thunder Wave. That was going to be forfeit. Because they realized they can't beat the Endgame Dragon Soul. Also, like, Cinderace was going to be very hard to beat for Pokemon. Especially since I recovered with Gastron. I guess they could have maxed Knuckled. Would have been completely fine. Even though I missed Thunder Wave, they max Knuckled to Grimstar. Pick up the Knockout. I go Draco's ult and I just hard switch into Arcanine for the Intimidate. And then, again, Draco's ult probably just one-shots the Cinderace. Unless they go for Steel Spike. But if they go for Steel Spike, it doesn't even hurt my Gastrodon, Arcanine, and Draco's ult. So, they wouldn't be getting much out of that. But, yeah. Again, setting up for the Draco's ult endgame, it plays very defensively, which I really like about this team. It has defensive capabilities, but it has really good offensive capabilities with the Draco's ult. Once you're able to set up for the Draco's ult. So, let's see. We're going to go against Devin as our next opponent with the team of... Okay, it's a Porygon Z team. Uh, Incineroar, Porygon Z, Clefairy, Urshifu, Rillaboom, and the... Indeed, so I don't know if that's dark Urshifu or water Urshifu. I'm thinking it's water, but it could be dark. Hmm. Dragos is really good in the end game. Arcanine is very solid, I think, with Grimstone as a lead because I really like the setting up light screen because it will really help. Getting the light screen up, I think, is really important here. I don't really see my own real boom doing work. It only does set up for the terrain against the NDD, and I don't think that's like even that important. I think Draco's will Corviknight in the back. Gastrodon's not really that good against this team. Unless it's a water Shifu, but even if it's a water Shifu, I think it's fine. Because I think I set up for Draco's old endgame. I could also aim for a win with the uh, Corviknight. Uh, but it might be tough because it could be Burn Jealousy on the Incineroar. So we'll see how this goes. I think our goal is to just light screen snarl up immediately. There really isn't that much my opponent can do that can really stop that. Uh, I think the Porygon... Well, actually... No, Porygon's base 90. Arcanine's definitely faster base 90. Yeah, okay, we're good. So yeah, we should be fine. We'll be able to click snarl very effectively. We'll be able to go for a light screen. And then it's really tough for my opponent to handle. Because even if they helping hand, uh, I still at least get the light screen effect so they shouldn't be able to pick up a knockout here so let's see Porygon see clefairy that's fine they could go for the sing attempt i think sing plus protect could be a thing if they had nasty plot that could be scary but they have to have nasty plot in order to do that so yeah we'll lead the arcanine plus the grim snarl they are nasty plot though this gets really tough actually but we'll see we'll go for the light screen and the snarl because if because like if they have Nasty Plot, I have to change my game plan immensely. But yeah, it is my best play here. We're going to see the Dynamax, so I'm guessing no Nasty Plot. And we're going to be able to get a Light Screen and Snarl off, which is amazing. So let's see what they go for here. This they will Dynamax the Porygon. And as long as we get that Snarl off, we're in a great position. Helping Hand, no surprise. Get the light screen up. And then we should be able to live one attack with the snarl. And we do connect. Nice. So this is looking really good for us already. Because we're able to get the snarl off into Porygon, which is excellent. And chip away at the clef. And we're going to see the mech strike come out, probably into the Arcanine. Oh, actually, it's actually the Grim Snarl, so yeah. That's fine. Grab us the tank deck. Pretty okay-ish. I think I'm going to go Corb next and uh, just snarl here. Or I could Thunder Wave. I could definitely Thunder Wave here. I don't think it's worth it. I think just going Corvus safe. Even they help a hand max lightning. We have light screen up and we get another Snarl off. If they go for the attack in the Arcanine, I should be able to survive one. And then eat my berry back. So I feel like very confident here. We're just clicking Snarl and bring out the Corv. So let's see. Help a hand gonna come out. 
So I'm guessing this is going to be the max strike once again. Oh, darkness actually. Okay. Into the core of covering a switch, which isn't bad for me because I am able to get another snarl off. That actually still did a lot of damage. It lowers the special defense, which is actually kind of funny. Um, I am able to get a snarl off into the Porygon. Oh, never mind. <laughs> wow, that's not the best. Okay. That's unfortunate. Oh, that's really annoying, actually. All right, I'm going to double back into Grim Snarl. Actually, Darkness is 70. Lightning. Oh, Lightning went in KO, actually, at this range. Yes, I don't have to switch. I think I'm actually just going to go for the Roost here. And I think I'm actually going to switch out my Arcanine into Grim Snarl because there's a chance they go for Max Strike into the uh, Arcanine slot. And I don't want to take all that damage even to protect, so we'll bring out the Grim Snarl. I also want to reset the speed here. They do go for Helping Hand once again. I'm pretty sure this is Lightning. I think I should be able to survive. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I am. Okay, perfect. So I am going to be able to get a Roost off, which is excellent. And then I think I just go for a Thunder Wave here. I don't see a reason not to Thunder Wave. They also set up Electric Train for me, which is nice. So yeah, they use up all their Dynamax. I took a bit of damage with the Grim Snarl and the Core, but the Core is kind of expendable, which is fine. I'm going to go for that Thunder Wave here into the Porygon and just go for the Switch because if I get the Thunder Wave on Porygon, uh, limits their chance to move, which is very nice, as well as setting up for my Draco's ult. Setting up for Draco's ult, I think, is really good. Um, yeah, and then I can start pressuring the Clef so it can't follow me on my attacks once I get my Dynamax set up. So yeah. Switch out Korv here into the Arcanine. It could follow me, but I think that's fine too. Because they definitely should be Thunderbolting, I think, here. If they go for a Grim Snarl and follow me, that's okay too. Because then I get to bring in Draco's Hold, I think. Where's he follow me? Okay. I'm going to keep trying to Thunder Wave the uh, Porygon, though. So let's see. I do get a Thunder Wave into the Clef. So there is a chance also that it can't follow me the next turn, which is completely okay here. And we're going to see the uh, Thunderbolt into the Grimstall. Yeah, that's Grimstall. Okay. I think that's fine, too. Can I bring in my Draco's ult now and just Airstream? I think I can. Yeah, I think I can go on the offense now. Because Corv, I don't want to bring out because of the light electric terrain. Yeah, I really just like the position I'm in, actually. I can go for Snarl very safely here, and I think I just Airstream the uh, Clef. If they double protect, that's fine too, because um, I just need one plus one on my uh, Draco Zolt. We're going to see the Incineroar come in. Okay. Makes sense, because they want to reset the stats. Once I get rid of Incineroar, though, I feel very good about just clicking uh, Max Lightning into that Incineroar. But once I get rid of Incineroar, I'm able to go for my Core Knight Sweep, I think. So I just need one plus one on the Draco Salt. That's all I needed the speed boost because it's going to be very hard for them to deal with the Draco Salt in the end. So yeah, we're going to be able to Dynamax Draco Salt. We're going to be able to go for Max Lightning and just go for the move because they really can't do anything. Uh, we're going to see Protect from Clef. Very makes sense. Smart play. As Snarl comes out, we'll chip away the Incineroar just a bit. I might have made a bit too hasty of a move. I could have went for the Bolt Beak, but I didn't want to take too much damage from a Hyper Beam, potentially. Even though I have a screen up. Ah, I don't know. I definitely could have just went straight for the Bolt Beak, I think. But I think it's an okay spot. I don't do much to Clef, though. Jeez. Like, I do nothing to Clef. Speed Rise. And I'm going to max lightning the uh, Incineroar slot because they either follow me or like let me get so much damage on Incineroar. Try just max lightning the Clef. You know what? Actually, no. Just max lightning the Clef. Pick up the knockout. So it can't follow me the next turn. Parting shots can come out here. I don't think it's that bad because Drago's is still going to do a ton of damage regardless. Because it's in the terrain. A life orb hustle is so strong. It's so strong. Oh, Clef gets paralyzed, but I doubled it anyway. I don't think they were going for a double protect either. Flame are going to come out. I didn't want to actually get the damage off into the Incineroar now that I thought about it because 
with the friend guard it was just doing too little to my taste to where i get a knockout on clef and that's an annoying redirector so that could have saved him in the potential late game because if he was able to get porygon z into that um clefairy it could have been really a nuisance so that's the main reason i want to preserve it so we do see the swap here let's see who's going to come out it could be the urshifu or it could be the incineroar if it's urshifu i go for the max lightning probably ko it's porygon z though so that means they're probably bringing incineroar i definitely want to get rid of the incineroar though i'm not as worried about porygon z i feel like because hyper beam shouldn't pick the knockout i think at this range but we'll see bring out the incineroar i think they're going for a Volpeak miss at this point because that's what it seems like that they're going for ah uh, no parting shot though so i'm not minus one they had to play super aggressive with their pc if they want this turn but you know what i'm gonna double up the uh incineroar anyway with the max lightning flamethrower because i do want that ko on incineroar if i can it sets up easier for my uh my core we're gonna see protect no surprise okay so i do get the turn right i'm able to get a big flamethrower off as well as a max lightning even though it's minus two it's in the lecture terrain with the hustle life orb should still do a very solid amount i'm not expecting it to ko the incineroar and i think it is assault vest incineroar based on the fact that it has u-turn but yeah it does a it does a good amount to where it's very very oh it's not a self center actually that's just especially defensive and it has u-turn apparently gets to heal back from his berry which is fine we're gonna see the u-turn once again okay so we get to find out the last pokemon which urshifu i'm assuming really boom okay huh really boom's an interesting one I do have the option to double protect. I don't know if they're Trick Room. I kind of doubt it. They could also make a hard read and go back to Ensign for the real boom and click Fake Out, which is definitely a potential option, but I just don't see the reason why I wouldn't just go for a double protect here because I think it covers a lot of options. So yeah, we'll go for the double protect. And then next turn, we can go for like will o -Wisp, I think, and a Bolt Beak. We could go for... There's a lot of things we could go for. It can be a little bit of a tough end game. Ooh, they do make the hard double. Okay. Into the Incineroar. Nice place. Nice place. All right. So uh, Incineroar comes out. That's fine. I do think that's fine, though. We'll double protect. There's no Urshifu, though. The Urshifu was a, something I was more scared of, but this works out perfectly. So we're able to get a double protect off as we're going to see the Hyper Beam go straight into Draco Soul. No, an Arcanine. Okay. So I wonder who you fake out if you're my opponent. If you're going for Hyper Beam and Arcanine, I think I could go out into my... I think I could actually just go... Oh, I had a light screen up. Hmm. Maybe it's better not to protect there. But I think it's just better to go Corb now and just go for the Bolt Beak. Into the Porygon. Because I think they might fake out the Draco's Old and just Hyper Beam the Arcanine. I think that Corb should be able to at least live one. And then I'd be able to go for a uh, Bolt Beak into the uh before i got the next turn but we're gonna see fake out on the core actually okay so i am able to get bolt beak off it is minus two or three but life or puzzle does not care it does not care that is a mistake they want to prevent the snarl off it looked like but i didn't have a reason to stay in because arcanine could win this game theoretically in the end so yeah able to eliminate that answer and now it's looking really tough for them because now i get to go arcanine for the uh raider slot realistically we're going to see the Reela Boom come in. And really, I just like going back in arc and going for a Bolt Beak. Because I don't think they're going to click Fake Out this time. So yeah, I'm just going to Bolt Beak the Incineroar. Go hard into our Arcanine. Because like, they can't really punish the Arcanine. And I could see them trying to expect me to switch out to Draco's ult. And try to crit my, my Coronet with Fire move. And I feel like I could prevent that by just going Arcanine here. They also might have high horsepower in the real boom, so they could just go for that play into the Arcanine, which I think is fun. But let's see. Man, I'm hitting both both beaks. I knew the games would come down to probably me hitting both beaks. That is just crazy. That's just crazy. Knock out the Incineroar. Minus two. What's a minus two? What's an intimidate to a Draco Zolt? A superpower gonna come out of Arcanine. That does crit though. But yeah, the game's over at this point. They can't touch Corv. Even if they crit a bunch, it's fine. Okay, they need a Willis miss. 
into a bunch of other factors but you know what i have aerial ace on my draco Soul, so i'll just save draco Soul for the end game because i should just be able to aerial ace through the real boom so i'm gonna go for the wisp because i'm not even sure if flame doors apply and i'm gonna go out in a corv as the battle is gonna be forfeit because it's a real boom versus a draco Soul, arcanine and corvinite very unlikely that they're able to pull through so we are able to pick up a win i might have went a bit too aggressive or went into uh, the Draco Soul a bit too early or Dynamax a bit too early. I think I could have definitely went for the bolt, straight up Bolt Beak. I think that would have been fine. So I think I could have went for that, but ended up aggressively working out. We were able to hit the Bolt Beak that was mattering on the Corv. We didn't have to hit the Incineroar one that time, but 80% isn't like that bad anyway. So, <laughs> and, uh, but you know, my luck with Hustle isn't the greatest, which is why I prefer to stay away from Durant and Draco Soul. But we are able to pick up two wins in today's episode of VDC 2020 Back to Battles. If you did enjoy this episode, again, please leave a like down below and leave a comment down below. It really does help out support my channel. And you can check out the rest of my stuff down below, including my social media, the size here of my channel, and more. If you would like to support this channel even further, you go check out my Patreon page listed down below in the description. But you know what? There are free ways to support me by leaving a like down below, leaving a comment down below, and sharing this video with your friends. Those are all great ways to support me. And just by watching this video, you're helping me out. So thank you very much for watching. Otherwise, you could check out my Twitch channel, as I mentioned before, down below in the description, where you can watch me live stream, VTC, and other variety games. You can go check out my second YouTube channel for some stream highlights, as well as some more VTC content and, you know, non-VTC content coming up. You can also check out my community discord if you want to interact with me and my awesome community and if you want to try out this team alongside me there is a pay spin as well as a rental code available down below it's a two-week time limit so make sure you grab it while you can but yeah that's gonna be pretty much it for me have a great day people and until we bow again i'll catch y'all later